Today is Friday, May 15th. 15th. George Brett was born today. George Brett. Happy birthday, George. I don't want to assume that everybody watching a cooking video knows George Brett, but he's most famous for this video. I'm Alexandria. This is Michael. Today we're making mashed potatoes. Welcome to the full measure. If you've never seen our show before, we like to make a dish in two different ways. The first way we make it is very simple, but we add a little bit to it. We call that the half measure. And then the second way we make it is a little more involved, a little more complicated, and we call that the full measure. At the end of the video, we tell you if the full measure recipe was worth the time and the effort. Mashed taters, potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> mashed potatoes, tell me. Probably my favorite part of Thanksgiving. Yeah, I love mashed potatoes. <laughs> The half measure recipe I'm making out of the just box potatoes with a little bit of dried thyme and some garlic powder just to plus them up a little bit. The full measure mashed potatoes are the traditional way that you would make by, you know, boiling the potatoes, mashing them up. I have a method for mashing them that makes them the absolute best that I've ever had. No lumps, they're not gummy or gluey. Um, and we'll make just normal, regular mashed potatoes. Instead of the dried dill, we'll use fresh dill. I thought you said it was dried thyme. You said for the box you had dried thyme. I meant dried dill. Dried dill. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Oopsie whoopsie. I think that's it. I think we're ready to make some half measure mashed potatoes. Alexandria is excited. <laughs> Our half measure recipe starts with a box of instant potatoes. Fun fact, these are used as snow in a lot of movies. I haven't had them in a while and I'm kind of excited to try them because they are primarily just dehydrated potato pulp. Start in a medium saucepan and add one and one third cups of water, a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, I have to disagree with the box, that seems pretty insignificant for this amount of potatoes, and two tablespoons of butter. Turn the heat to medium, bringing the water to the boil. Once a rollin', add two thirds of a cup of whole milk, and one and a half cups of instant tater flakes, one teaspoon spoon of dried dill, this could also be added to the water during the first step, and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. Give these a quick mixy mix with a fork and you're done. Seriously quick. A very easy way to add a starch to your weeknight dinner. Adding the garlic and dill will hopefully give these otherwise bland box potatoes a little kick. Again, I haven't had them in a while, but I seem to remember being pretty impressed with something that is this easy and quick to make. Writing this voiceover legitimately took longer. Let's see how they taste. That's from the box. It's from the box. How long ago was it that you stepped away? Like Not six right. minutes? Yeah. I mean, that was nothing. What do you think? That smells good. What do you smell? The stuff. The stuff? Yeah. The dill? Mm-hmm. What's the dill? No. <laughs> Let's take a bite. Okay. Tastes like mashed potatoes. Yeah. Of all the stuff that we've made, half measure wise, like, I think that that's the best. Uh, I think if you're making mashed potatoes on a weeknight, like, I mean, that was like six minutes. No, no shame in, in a box of taters. No, I would jazz them up a bit. I would put some rosemary or dill, definitely more salt in the box says. I'm not big on the texture. It's kind of powdery. Yeah, I mean, it's not gonna stop me from eating it. It doesn't really have like that chemical-y flavor that a lot of times happens with boxed food or, or like frozen food. I would say that if you had fresh dill, it would make these a million times better. The, di the dry dill is kind of hard to taste. The garlic is nice though. You can definitely taste that. Of all the, of all the like easy at-home stuff, like that's, yeah. that's probably the one to get. Here's my asterisk. I dirtied a pot. I still had to boil some stuff. I had to dirty a measuring cup. So honestly, the only difference between this and the full measure mashed potatoes is that I have to peel them and then mash them up. The full measure mashed potatoes are gonna have to be like top tier to, to be not worth yeah, I just feel like saving some time. Hard. But let's see, let's go make some taters. Okay. Potatoes. <laughs> Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Our full measure mashed potatoes are from a Bon Appetit recipe that I tweaked. It's pretty true to the original, but it's a little more to my personal taste. As is the case with all mashed potatoes, we start by peeling. These particular Yukon Golds are pretty small, so buckle in. I'll just use some typical YouTube magic here. Wait, I've got a better method for you actually. I'll get back to this in a few. For now, place all of your spuds in a pot and cover with cold water. Season with a hefty fistful of kosher salt. 
It should taste like salt water from the ocean. Yeah, I actually taste my water when I'm making potatoes. Boil these for about 30 to 35 minutes or until they are tender but not falling apart. A good way to tell is by taking the end of a knife and pressing it into the potato. It should be able to pierce without much resistance. You want to make sure to not overcook the potatoes, and this is a good way to monitor. Drain and place the potatoes back in the warm pot to dry for about five minutes. While we wait for the potatoes to dry, put one and a half cups of whole milk, a half cup of heavy cream, and a few sprigs of fresh dill into a medium saucepan. Cut about seven to 10 cloves of garlic in half and put them in the milk, skins and all. These will be strained later. Set to a medium heat and cook for about five minutes or until it's fragrant. Let's address the issue of leaving the skins on the potatoes. This is the secret weapon in the war of lumpy mashed potatoes. Fortunately, it will also dispatch the skins of those potatoes along the way. This is a food mill, or a ricer. It's very handy in the kitchen, and it's pretty inexpensive. It has several screens for different consistencies. Today, we are using the finest screen. Add a few potatoes at a time to the food mill and spin forward. It will begin to build up, but you can rotate backwards to clear the mill. Take your time and try not to overload it. The skins will either be pulverized or just rise to the top in little clumps as you go along. This is a little easier if they had been skinned, but if you hate peeling potatoes, this is a great way to skip that step. Four to five pounds of potatoes is still gonna take some time, so prepare your arm muscles. After you finish, the potatoes will look like this. All the skins and lumps are gone, forever. Add four teaspoons of kosher salt, Cube two sticks of room temperature butter and stir into the potatoes until fully incorporated. Strain the dill and garlic infused milk through a fine mesh sieve and reserve in a large measuring cup or something you can use to pour. Add the milk to the potatoes about one half a cup at a time and fold until completely incorporated. This will slowly begin to transform the texture of the potatoes to a light and creamy consistency. Good luck not eating this directly out of that bowl. When you're done, put in a serving dish and top with some fresh dill, a little black pepper, and these are finished. This is the first time I've made this specific recipe, and I can tell you, this is now my go-to recipe for Thanksgiving and any get-together. They are rich and creamy, the texture is perfect, and they have a huge amount of flavor from that garlic. Dill was the biggest change from the Bon Appetit recipe, but I love the way dill tastes with potatoes. Let's give these a taste. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well. Okay. What do you think? Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Yeah, I've already had a bite, so. What? Yeah. Rude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Mmm. Little nap in a bowl. Yeah. Ooh. Man, I love dill. I don't think we need to talk about anything. Let's just eat. I had to put mine down because of all the stuff that we've made on the show, that's one of the first things that has made me be like, actually, I'm gonna stop the camera and just eat because I just want to eat this. That's good. That was a fair amount of work. It wasn't a ton. We've made we've made some stuff before that was more work. I'm pretty speechless. Those are really good. I mean, the verdict is, I'm not even gonna wait until we get to the chart. The 100% worth it. These are so good. You're mixing the potatoes so much that they do become like whipped, but it's also like creamy. So the box ones were so kind of like grainy. Yeah. And not in a- Gritty. Gritty. Yeah. And not in a way that I really cared for. And this has, such a subtle texture to it. Mm -hmm. The texture is great, but the flavor with the with the heavy cream, which adds like just another level of richness on top of just milk, and then you steep the herbs and oh, the wow. garlic. Uh, sometimes with garlic potatoes, like it can be so assertive that you're just like it has that like like heat that gar like raw garlic mm -hmm. can be like. But because it's steeped in the milk, like the garlic is like rich and warm in a base note, rather than like really high really in your face raw garlic flavor. And it is, if you, these were served at Thanksgiving and when you go up for seconds, you can only get one thing, that's oh, what yeah. I would get. This was so good. I will not be giving these to our neighbors. These are staying. Yeah, those, those are for us. Yeah. Tonight. Let's see where they rank on the chart of worth itness. This is our chart of worth itness where we measure how much effort goes into a dish versus how much payoff you get. The box mashed potatoes were incredibly simple and honestly, they tasted okay. They would work in a pinch or for any weeknight dinner, but these full measure mashed potatoes were on a whole other level. Even without the peeling, it's still a fair amount of time to boil the potatoes and put them through the food mill, but the payoff is well worth the effort. Thank you so much for watching this video and hopefully you can check out some of our other videos. If you have any suggestions about any recipes you'd like us to try, go ahead and leave it in the comments. If you try this recipe or any of the other recipes we've posted, please do tag us on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter. Um, I'll put all those links in the description as well. Or like send us a, a direct message with their, your picture in it and, and we can post it in our stories. Yeah, for sure. Um, and I gotta be honest, like 
people cooking food that they've seen us cook is like, that's pretty cool. It's like the coolest reward. Seeing that is like, that's a big deal and it's really cool. So thank you for sending those in. But thank you so much for watching these videos. Bye.